What's up, world? This is Sophisticated Investing Life, and we're going to discuss when is the best time to buy a stock as well as when is the best time to sell a stock. This video was actually a suggestion from one of my subscribers named Roman Mueller, who likes to invest in growth stocks, kind of like myself, but usually invest in them at the wrong time. I face a similar problem, um, buying stocks right when they were flying high, but would typically feel the pain on stocks coming back down to earth. Um, so I always thought it was a price thing, right? And if buying a stock isn't hard enough, selling it can be even tougher, especially once the stock stop starts going in the wrong direction. Sometimes panic selling might happen. I'm not even gonna lie, I fell into it myself, right? Um, so, I mean, we're gonna talk about this and discuss when's the best time to either to also buy as well as sell. So tap that like button, subscribe to the channel and increase your investment game, and let's get started. Now, the biggest key to determining when to buy a stock, as well as when to exit a stock, is your time horizon, which depends on your investment style. Now, to learn more about different investment styles and how using this information can take your stock picking game to the next level, check out the video in the card above. It's a big secret that people really don't talk about. So there's actually four different investment styles I've identified. So let's go through each one and talk about when's the best time to buy and to sell for each. Now, let's first start off with the contrarian investors, right? Um, the closest thing to value investing. Now, believe it or not, this type of investing actually has the shortest investment horizon, one to three years. Now, why is that? Why so low? It's primarily because contrarian investors really depend on a change in like valuation, so a valuation multiple, to drive the returns. Now, taking a step back, remember, there are three sources of stock returns. Why a stock returns what it does, right? You have shareholder yield, which is you add dividend yield plus buyback yield. So when a company buys back stocks, you add both of those two yields together, right? Shareholder yield. You have profit growth. Um, primarily net profit growth. So that's two. And three is the change in the valuation multiple. Or you can think of it as a change in sentiment, right? That's some people think of valuation multiples as just a read on sentiment for a company. So contrarian investors should buy stocks when there's a little bit of adversity in there, um, which has increased the skepticism um, and actually has led to the valuation dipping, right? Or just change the sentiment altogether. So whether that be through um, a uh, research analyst downgrading the company or even a short seller coming out against the company, um, more money actually leasing, leaving the stock. So fund flows, you can watch fund flows of a stock. If there's a lot more money leaving than coming in, that's a sign. As well as some, some companies are just in some type of trouble, regulatory trouble, maybe mis-executing things, they're missing on earnings, you know, things of that nature where the sentiment turns initially negative. These are ideal times for a contrarian investor to come in and buy the stock. So once things start working back in in favor, you know, once, you know, now the research analysts are upgrading the stock and now there's more money coming in and leaving the stock, you know, and now they're just doing just great on all quarterly earnings. That's when you should exit because now that valuation multiple, that change is not there like it used to be. That upside is not there like it used to be. Um, next off. You know, just moving, moving quick here, we're going to talk to the income investors, a lot of the dividend investors, and they're coming in about two to five years, right? Now, this may seem a little low for some, but again, valuation matters here, right? And a dividend yield is a crucial component to the strategy. Unless a company is in distress, income investors will rarely be able to buy stocks where the dividend growth outpaces the stock price growth. Um, so because of that, over time, dividend yields for a company tend to go down. So remember, dividend yield is the dividend, annual dividend, divided by the price, right? So when the price is increasing faster than the dividend is increasing, that ratio is going to naturally go down, which is why dividend yields come down. Um, so the, because the best time to actually buy and sell dividend stocks, for example, is when you have like a hard dividend requirement, like 3%. If the dividend yield for a company is above 3% and everything else in your analysis checks out, buy it. But as soon as it dips below 3%, sell it and look for some something else that meets that requirement. 
probably the best way to attack dividends for especially for income investors now let's talk growth investors this is what we've really been looking forward to this is what i had to learn firsthand uh, now real growth investors like real growth investors right they need growth to play out right and they need growth to play out not in sales in particular but they need growth to play out in net profit right that's where the profit the profit growth is where you really need um the growth to come from so you need at least three years if not an entire um, economic cycle which is on average seven to eight years because valuations matter less profit growth will be the big driver of returns here it may even have to grow very fast if the company is trying to grow fast as well and they're diluting shareholders which will lead to actually a negative um buyback yield if you look at it in, a, in an inverse way um because of the long leash needed you need a long runway to make this happen growth investors may need to dig deeper into the company to find out what is really going to drive the growth of profits right and that's what you really need to pay attention to uh you need to pay attention to that which in other words are it's called key performance indicators of a company right that's what you're going to need to pay attention to and use that as your criteria for buying or selling um so for example let's take netflix for example right subscriber growth is the key number right if sub there's more subscribers being added to the platform then naturally the growth um in sales and profits will naturally come um so for example the buy netflix um, subscriber growth is above 10 percent it stays above 10 percent you buy and you keep buying as soon as it dips below 10 percent you exit and you look for something else right so that's a good way to get around that um and actually, if you want to dig deeper into understanding how to analyze a company from a business perspective, right? Uh, I actually made a video about that, how to analyze any stock, a basic framework for doing it. So check that out in the card above. Um, now, last but not least, we got quality investors. Um, these are the ones that could potentially buy and hold forever, right? Like Warren Buffett. He's definitely in the quality investing camp. And speaking of him, if you want to fast track your wealth building process you know be able to get the six or seven figure um investment account relatively quickly you should download my free pdf on warren buffett's top three investment secrets that the media does not tell you about these are secrets that people just uh, maybe they just pay more attention to the, to the value investing side of things but there's three things that warren buffett does that no other investor does which is why he is the cream of the crop so if you want to take your investment game to the next level make sure to download um that free pdl now what makes quality investing really special is that it's the only style that can truly depend on all three um, sources of stock returns you, you could you can see it through dividend and buyback yields you can see it through the profit growth and you can see it in the slight change in multiple valuation multiple if any change at all right so for this to really play out though quality investors need to pay attention to the competitive advantage of the company right you need to pay close attention to what makes this company special right why their returns on assets or return on equity that much higher why are their margins so much higher than the competition right pay attention to that and once things start dipping um once company other companies or competition start taking up market share that's when you need to get concerned and actually exit the stock so that one is probably the most nuanced answer which is partly why once you buy a quality stock you can hold it for a long time because it takes it takes a lot for it to actually come off but eventually you might run to that situation so always keep an eye out for that um, well that's all i have for you all today so which type of investor are you and are you planning on actually using these buy and sell rules um for depending on what type of investor you are make sure to let me know in the comment section below and don't forget download my free pdf top three investment secrets by warren buffett to take your investment game to the next level well, that's all I have for you all today. So until the next time, thank you for watching and stay sophisticated.